This video will show you a couple of helpful tools when working with parts that will eventually be created in real life. The first of these is selecting a material. When creating a single part, you can right-click on Material Not Specified in the Feature Manager and Edit Material to choose from the multiple options available. Each material listed has information about its mechanical, thermal, and other properties, and you can even create your own material. To do this, right-click on Custom Materials. You can add a new category to better organize your materials. Then right-click on it and select New Material. Here you can input all the data about its properties. Give it a name and click Apply and Close. Select Yes for the warning. Another extremely helpful tool is Mass Properties under the Evaluation tab. Here you can see the mass, center of mass, volume, and other data about your component or assembly based on the materials you chose. The density appears to be zero, but if you go to Options and increase the number of decimal places, you will see that that is actually just an approximation. These properties are with respect to the coordinate system of the part. But if you want, you can create a new coordinate system from the Reference Geometry drop-down and see how these properties change. Click on Mass Properties again and select the new coordinate system from the drop-down. If you're working with an assembly and want to see if your parts come together properly, you can use Interference Detection, a tool found under the Evaluate tab. Select the components you want to test or just let the whole assembly, which is selected by default, and hit Calculate. In the Results box, you can expand each interference and see the highlighted components in the graphics area. For a better view, select Hidden under Non-Interfering Components. Moreover, if you want to check the mobility of your parts, you can use the Move Component tool and under Options, select Collision Detection. Also check Stop at Collision. Then, drag the parts to see how much they can move under these constraints. When dealing with assemblies and drawings, part references may get complicated. For example, you can't send someone just the assembly file as that is a collection of mates. You need to send the assembly and all the individual parts used in it. This is where Pack and Go comes in handy. With the assembly open, click File and select Pack and Go. You can now save the assembly or drawing and all the reference parts to a folder or zip file. Don't forget that you can also use eDrawings to easily send large files. 